Okay, first circle theorem question, question 18. Um, we have quite a busy looking diagram here and let's just check that everything that's written down is on the diagram. So the center is O, A, B and C are points on the circumference. D, C, O is a straight line. Yep, that looks pretty straight. D, A is a tangent to the circle. Okay, so that looks obvious from the uh, diagram but we now know for sure that's what it is. And A, D, O is 36, that's labeled. So we want angle A, O, D labelled here on the diagram and the key fact that we're going to use is that DA is a tangent to the circle because we've got a triangle involving the angle that we want and now I can label this angle here as being 90 degrees the reason being that a tangent meets a radius at 90 degrees um, and so if I just consider that triangle there I know that angle AOD plus 90 degrees plus the 36 degrees must equal 180 degrees and obviously the reason for that is the angles in a triangle sum to 180 degrees. Now if the question had asked me to give reasons I'd have to write that out in full um, the bit in brackets is just as a guide. Um, so simply solve this equation AOD plus 126 is 180 um, so subtract 126 from 180 and we get angle AOD equals 54 degrees. Okay, part B, work out the size of angle A, B, C. So that's uh, this little bit up here in the diagram at the top. Um, it might not be obvious how this angle relates to other ones that we know on the diagram, but if we consider the points A and C, they form the base uh, on which we have the angle A, B, C and the angle A, O, C, one of which is at the center, the other of which is at the circumference. So we can actually say that A, O, D uh, divided by two will give us angle A, B, C. So that's 54 degrees divided by two is 27 degrees. So the reason is because the angle subtended at the center is twice the angle subtended at the circumference. But we write it more simply like this. We don't need the word subtended, it's fine in this form. Question 19, work out the size of angle B, A, O. Well, the information we've got, B and C are points on the circle. A, B and A, C are tangents, so again that's a really important bit of information and angle B, O, C is 130 degrees. Um, so let's have a look, we want angle B, A, O, let's just label that on the diagram so we can see what we're talking about, it's that one there and I'll call it X. And if we label this, uh, add this extra line on here, we can make a right angle at the top, the reason being um, we have a tangent here. Okay, um, so a tangent meets a radius at 90 degrees, and therefore we can do the same thing in the bottom half. In addition, I can say that these two uh, lines here, AB and AC, are equal in length because they're both tangents to the circle from the same external point. So I've got two congruent triangles here because they both share um, uh, two lengths to the same and a right angle. So labeling BOC, there's 130, I can split that in half. Now that I know I've got congruent triangles, that angle there is 65 degrees, which means I can now just consider one of my triangles and consider triangle AOB. And now I've got two angles, I need the third, so it's a straightforward case of using angles in a triangle summing to 180 degrees. So make that as an as a, uh, equation and solve that by subtraction and we get x equals 25 degrees. Right, question 20, the last one. This is quite tricky. It needs a bit of imagination. Um, so we're given R and S as points on the circumference. Uh, TS is a tangent. Tangents keeps coming up here. And RST is labelled x and that's on the diagram. And we will need to prove that uh, angle ROS is equal to 2x. Now it's not immediately obvious how angle ROS links to uh, the angle labelled x, so we're going to have to find a clever construction here. Um, but we notice that angle x is the angle between a chord and a tangent, and that forms part of the alternate segment theorem. And if I just give myself the extra lines that I need, I can involve the alternate segment theorem and go from there. So I'm going to make myself um, an angle in the opposite segment, Let's just call that point P, and uh, we can label that angle as Y. Um, and now the alternate segment theorem links angle X and angle Y. In fact, it tells me that Y is equal to X. And the good news here is that 
is my favorite circle theorem because the reason that you write down is the simplest. You simply write alternate segment theorem. Um, the reason I've done this is because angle y uh, can link to the angle that we want. So the step two of my proof is to say that uh, angle ROS, the one that I want, is two times y. Um, the reason angle subtended at the center is twice the angle subtended at the circumference. Um, so we write our reason out there. Um, and really, that's all we need to do. We can just need to link these two things together. I've said that angle ROS is equal to 2y, and given a reason. And I've said that y is equal to x, so 2y must be equal to 2x. And that's what we wanted to prove. That's it.